Good morning, YouTube, and today I'm going to be defending capitalism. Yes, you heard me right, defending capitalism. First of all, I'd like to ask you this question. Do these, that are about to flash up on your screen, look familiar? They should do. These are the letters that countries across the world write with, universally, and accepted as the, the standard forms of written, written communication on which our civilization is based. These are primarily capitalist concepts. They were used, especially in the, left, in the case of the Phoenician alphabet, to note down information, uh, trade, logs, the whole lot, in order to receive finances at later dates. This is the primary function of written communication at this point in time. Let us zoom forward in history a bit to 210 AD. This is the extent of the Roman Empire, widely regarded to be one of the greatest empires humanity has ever known. This was founded entirely upon capitalism. It could not have existed. Its armies would never have been paid. It was a capitalist invention. It is as simple as that. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not defending some of the terrible things that capitalism has caused. There's the droughts and the famine that have been brought about by capitalist uh, companies, multinational corporations, chopping down the rainforests and enslaving the people in South Southern America and Africa. That truly is terrible. However, we are also ignoring some of the great things that this capitalism has brought about. We're looking at only the bad as a general rule. These empires, they laid down the foundations for so, so many great constructs. The Romans gave us so much of our written communication, so much of our language, much of the grammar in the words that I'm using now to bring you this video were brought about by the Romans. The Latin, which is their language, is now widely regarded to have been the language of science, something that you may argue could have been, could have found an alternative, but really, I think that this stuff that was brought around by capitalism is lo is such a huge advantage to us that we cannot wipe out this entire art area as a waste of time and a really bad thing. This here is a picture of the Ford assembly line somewhere in America, the foundation of the modern automobile. This was made possible by something called the division of labor. You may have heard this before. It's basically many, many different people specializing in one area, specializing in one area of the line of production to produce an object that neither of them could do themselves. For example, a computer. Someone designs the screen, someone designs the graphics card, someone do designs the hard drive, or in the case of the picture there, someone will build the exhaust, the carburetor, the windows, and put it all together. This is a job that none of them could do together, and they wouldn't have been motivated to do this by anything other than money. Can you think about it? People are fundamentally lazy and greedy. They want something back from their work, and there's nothing really you can get back from a job like that except money, which goes towards buying a house or buying a car yourself. And this is why capitalism sets it apart from so many of the other areas of running a thing. Let us look at communism for a moment. Communism was a movement founded by Karl Marx in the early 1800s, which then spread during the later eras across most of the country. Here is a map. Now, this here is a communist camp, and look, those are dead bodies on the grounds. I'd like you to ask yourself, does this work? Can you see the evidence of this working here? Does it look like this is a model way to run a society? Now think of the evils that capitalism has caused, and there are many, granted, but are they as deep and as poor as this? People know that they're being exploited within capitalism, but they can always find a way out. With communism, there was no way out. Once you were poor, you were poor, and you stayed poor until you either died of cold or being shot by the government. This didn't end until the very late 1970s, after the Cold War and Russia is still really going on in places like Cuba and China, where working conditions are, needless to say, appalling. Capitalism, clearly, is better than this, and communism does not work. So, really, I don't know what people are so complaining about. What you're seeing here are photos of St. George's Hospital, London, with a budget of £486 million. This budget is spread across hundreds of staff, thousands of staff, who all go towards saving our lives. Often, who wouldn't be able to do the jobs if it wasn't for capitalism? Where would they get their food? I mean, you can say farming off the ground, but why would farmers give up their hard-earned crops just to go to a hospital that they're never ever going to see because it's in the middle of a city? These things come about through capitalism. People can afford to buy food because they're funded. 
this and that and this and that happens and so on and so on until you get to the state of a hospital which goes towards saving people's lives I think people sometimes are a little too quick to bitch about capitalism because of the problems in their own lives and this is a system that while it doesn't fully work there is no real alternative and I'm going to ask you this what would you do without money? And that thought, thank you, goodbye.